start with uh, Eric, or we can start with John, then Eric. John's in the back. Thank you. Uh, Frankie, can you just give us an update on how you're feeling and what you've done in the last couple of weeks to be ready to be on the active roster? Uh, feeling pretty good. Uh, been throwing uh, bullpens and uh, threw live VP last Sunday. Uh, everything went well, and uh, just ready and excited to uh, um, show what I can do out there and uh, just being ready to go. Uh, Eric in the third row. Frankie, have they discussed with you a specific role, how they see using you in this series? Uh, I think I'm going to be out of the bullpen, uh, but I'm telling uh, um, whatever they want me to do. They want me to be an opener, whatever, a starter, um, reliever, whatever they want me to do. I'm willing to do whatever just to help and something. Kind of relating to that, how stretched are, out are you? Could you give 50 pitches, 60, 70? Uh, like I don't think I'll be able to get that far, but um, probably like two innings plus, um, something like that. Uh, Anthony towards the back on the left. Frankie, does the success that Wandy and Clay Holmes had, they didn't have any rehab games. They just went right in the playoffs. How hard is that to do, and does that give you some, some hope that you can be do that as well? Uh, well, they don't miss um, as many games as I miss. Uh, they were down for like, what, like a week, something like that. Uh, but no, nah, just, just to see them uh, being out there and uh, how they handle themselves, you know, under pressure and everything. Uh, they've been doing a really amazing job and uh, just hoping to continue to uh, um, Kind of like do what they're doing, you know. Go out there and try to do my best. Uh, up front on your right, Brendan. Hey, Frankie. Aside from the thirty pitches, do you think you can pitch more than once this series, or is it once and you're down a few days? Uh, I mean, I feel pretty good right now. So I mean, I'm, if they need me to pitch back-to-back uh, -back games, I'm, I'll be ready for it. And the second row, John. Harrison Bader was saying that it's tough when you come over and you're not at your best right away and you kind of have to show yourself. Obviously, you saw what he did in the division series. How much do you want that personally, the, the chance to really get to show that yourself? I mean, I was I was really excited just to um, be on the roster and uh, didn't have first uh, a good impression when I got here with the Yankees, but uh, um, I'm just excited to go out there and uh, show him that like, I can – I can do really good teams, you know. I, I can go out there and uh, and uh, get out. And I feel like that's all about, you know, as a pitcher, just trying to go out there and, and do your best and get people out. Uh, Randy in the fourth row on your right. You've had good success against Houston this year. Not a, a lot of people have. Uh, what's your secret to, to attacking that lineup? Um, they're a tough lineup. I mean, everybody knows that. Uh, they can hit. But, um, I mean, I feel if you go out there and hit your spots and uh, uh, make good pitches, you know, stay around the zone, they're going to they're gonna swing, they're going to put the ball in play. You got nine people behind you, so they got to hit it somewhere. <laughs> uh, John seated in the back. Uh, from spending time in the American League West, Frankie, who are your friends on the Houston side of, of this rivalry, and, and have you been texting any of them the last 24 hours now that you have a chance to play them? Uh, I won't say friends. <laughs> I know, uh, um, like I know uh, a lot of them just for like for facing uh, um, with the years. Uh, I mean, I know Atuve and all those guys, and I mean, if I see him on the field, I say what's up, you know. But now that like we like that close. <laughs> uh, Greg in the third row. Frank, are you, are you interested to see how your stuff might play up in short spurts out of the bullpen? Uh, I mean, I pitched out of the bullpen before. It's not that's not new for me. Um, when I first came up, I was in the bullpen, and uh, I remember back in 2020 when uh, we made the postseason with the A's. Uh, um, I pitched out of the bullpen, so that's not a new role for me. I feel like uh, um, I'm familiar with it, and uh, uh, just want to go out there and, uh, and compete. Questions, Brian. Frankie, you have really good career numbers in this ballpark, too. What do you like about this environment? What do you think it brings out in you? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. I, um, I feel like I have the same mentality every time I, uh, I go out there and pitch. I mean, I have success here, but I feel like if I'm if I'm on my A game, if I'm throwing the strikes and I'm hitting my spots and I'm throwing the pitches I, I want to throw, pretty much I'm going to have success. Uh, Ian, on your left, Frankie. 
it's rare to see a player as explosive offensively as Altuve at that size. What makes him so difficult to pitch to? Uh, he's a tough guy. You know, he's a tough guy. He's out there swinging. You know, he he's a contact hitter. You know, he puts the ball in play. Yeah. He can run. Um, but I feel like if you if you make good pitches and you stay into your plan, you can probably have success against him. Other questions for Frankie? All right, Frankie, have a great series. Appreciate right, it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, Luis Severino will be down in a few minutes. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Uh, who's got the first question? No questions? <laughs> All right. Who do we got? I'll start with Eric. Luis, when you look at the Astros lineup and compare it to the Cleveland lineup that you faced in the division series, uh, how much of a different challenge is facing Houston? Uh, I think they're uh, similar, but with more power, I would say. You know, a team that doesn't strike out that much, uh, they put a ball in play, uh, and like I say, they have power. So I think it's around the same team that we faced 2017. You know, uh, they got a, a couple of di different guys, you know, but I still there around the same team. Uh, we'll go right there in the center. Sevi, how much is still lingering from 2017? Do you see this as a revenge spot for you guys here? I mean, not as a revenge, but we need to play. We need to win. You know, uh, uh, they have a good team. We have a good team, and they know uh, our team very good, and we know their team very good. So we just need to go there, compete, and try to win. In the third row, uh, Brian. <coughs> Luis, to follow up on that, you were here in 17, 19. You know, when you walk into this building, a lot of heartbreak happened here. What, what are you, what are your feelings? What do you think about? I mean, I think about that we lose here. That's the only thing that's been to my mind. And I think all the guys that have been here since then, they had to remember that. They had to remember that feeling and and try to not feel the same way. You know, this year, try to be better. Try to go out there with that mentality and win games. And up front to your right, Brendan. I think it's fair to say that Astros fans don't like the Yankees so much. What do you think about the hostile environment you'll encounter tomorrow? I mean, everywhere we go, we're not like. So it's not, it's not even, it's not always, it's not here. It's everywhere. So it's, it's going to be the same, you know, if we go to, I mean, Boston every year is the same. We go to, you know, the only place that they really like us a little bit is in Tampa because they don't have a lot of fans there. But <laughs> I mean, it's like that everywhere we go. So we, I think we're used to it and we embrace that. Uh, is if they don't like us because you know they think you know we're good, if we can win. We'll stay right there. Elaborando un poco lo que está diciendo él, o sea, este, y ustedes, ¿cuál es su perspectiva, su opinión? acerca de este rival que tienen enfrente que durante los últimos media década se ha convertido en un talón de Aquiles para su equipo, pero también un equipo que ha, junto con ustedes, han creado grandes series. No, como ya anteriormente, es un equipo eh, que tiene tremendo talento, eh, un equipo de poder eh, que se ha demostrado que tiene lo suficiente para saber estar aquí en los playoffs. Y ¿sabes? nosotros como equipo lo que tenemos que... que, que Eh, ir al terreno a jugar pelota, ¿sabe? a jugar a dar lo mejor de nosotros y al final nada sabe lo que puede pasar. Uh, Dave in the third row on your left. 
Luis, it's pretty rare that you get to celebrate and then have to play such an important game right after. How was it? Did guys pretty much switch from party mode to business mode fairly quick last night? Or how did that transition work? Because you, you guys you know, deserve to celebrate after the win, but it was kind of tough to, to know when to switch it back. Yeah, I mean, I mean the champagne is terrible, so I think that, <laughs> that helped a little bit. Nobody likes that thing. So, <laughs> so I think after you know uh, ten or twenty minutes, everybody was tired. I mean, you know, yes, <laughs> we, we went to the uh, to the plane right away. I think everybody's ready. I think I didn't see nobody drinking. You know, drinking much. Like I said, the champagne was not great. Uh, but I think everybody's ready. Uh, Greg, up front to your left. You, you said earlier it's not about revenge. Have you personally gotten over w what the Astros did in 2017? And if you have or haven't, how have you been able to perhaps put that behind you? I mean, of course. I mean, a long time ago, you know, uh, you know, MLB did what they need to do to fix uh, whatever they were doing. And I think this is where I, I always think that this is the thing that they don't need to cheat because it's it's really good. They have a great lineup. They can go to the World Series. They can you know they can play good because they've always been good. So for me, that's that's in the past, you know. Uh, and we need to focus in the present right now. And we have uh, the team that beat us a couple of times in front of us, and we had to go there and just give 100 percent and play good baseball. Uh, Randy in the fourth row on your right. I, I was going to ask you about that too, but um, was there a time when you were very angry, and does time heal that uh, at some point? I know Judge Stan and some other guys were uh, the next spring really were strong about their opinions. Uh, was there a time when you were really upset? Oh yes, of course. I mean, for the second that I hear about it, you know, uh, I mean, I was in the booth when when I saw that homer go through my head. So. You know, when I think about all that, of course, you know, I was mad at the beginning, but, you know, we can do nothing about it. I mean, what are we going to do? I mean, if I stay angry, is that going to change something? It's not going to do nothing. So I just, you know, I, I mean, I think in spring training, everybody was asking about that. It was just, it was too much. So, uh, like I say, now we got this team that's very good. You know, they got great players. So. We got a chance to go out there and compete. Other questions for Luis? Uh, Ian, on your left, Luis. When people think of the 2017 Astros going forward, I think the first person they think of is Altuve. What makes him so dangerous as a hitter, and what's the best way to attack him as a pitcher? I mean, like you said, he's a great hitter. So we just need to go. For me, is whatever is good for me that day. You know, I don't think there is a like a way to go to get him out. You know, he, he's a smart guy. He's been in the league for a long time. He's been hitting 300 for a long time. So uh, you, you, uh, for me, I just need to go whatever I think is going to work that day for me. Other questions for Luis? Anything else? No? All right, Luis, thank you so much yeah. for coming in. Appreciate it. Uh, Aaron Boone will be in here at 4.15, and Framber Valdez will be in here at 4.30. All right, we'll get started with Aaron, who's got the first question. 
I'll start up here with Francisco. Eski, welcome to Houston. And um, two very quick questions, sir. Um, in the middle of September, you guys had a rough, rough moment, and then it turned around. You remember the slap and everything, you know, and everything came up upwards. Other than that, that press conference, what did you? What was the secret to turn things around for the Yankees and to make it all the way to the LCS? And I'll be criminal journalistic from my sense if I don't ask you regarding the 2017, the Astros, the controversy, blah, blah, blah. Is that within the, you guys' radar or, or guns be guns? Um, well, we started playing re really well, I think, at the start of September. You know, we had our struggles in August, even a little bit in, in, in July. So, you know, it was kind of that six-week stretch and more specifically a two- to three-week stretch where we really struggled. We struggled to score runs. A lot of it was we were injured. You know, we were, we were really beat up at, at, at different points in that, but also weren't playing great baseball. Um, you know, I think this team is, again, we talk about it from day one of spring training, all the things that are coming our way. So we're prepared for struggles, good times, bad times, adversity, great moments, whatever. You know it's all coming for you in a long season, especially playing in the American League East. So um, I think the guys did a really good job of kind of weathering the storm like okay we we know we're there there was an underlying confidence i believe with our group that we were going to get through those tough times um and they played really well down the stretch and in september when we needed to and uh you know it's i think it's a tribute to the makeup of that group but it's also we started to get a little healthier and we got guys back in the mix that that were real important contributors as far as the 17 I don't think it's really – we know we're up against a great opponent and we're going to do all we can to to put our best foot forward and try and beat them and, and move on. And, um, you know, I understand that's a focal point of the fan bases and all that, but we're focused on trying to beat a great team. On the third row on your left, Andy. Do you give any consideration to starting Cole in game two and um, – no. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, would he be considered a candidate to come back short, uh, short rest, potentially if the series went longer? Or is it just yes? Like, I mean, okay. Oh yeah. And uh, how do you expect to use Montas during the series? As a reliever, um, you know he's not that built up. Uh, we'll see. You know, hopefully he pitches well and and gets in there and starts having an impact and you know it starts to become more than that. But I, I was really encouraged by what I saw in his live outing over the weekend in, in Tampa. And, uh, you know, I felt like he looks really healthy to me and strong. And, and I felt like um, the ball was coming out really well. So excited to get him in the mix. And hopefully he can play, you know, a little bit of a role for us um, at some point in this series, uh, getting some big outs. But I feel like physically he's ready for that. Second row on your right, John, then Meredith. If you look at all the scheduling stuff from the last few days and everything like that, how much of a skill is it to develop nimble players, in a sense, guys who can kind of deal with all that stuff over the course of a whole season to be ready for anything kind of? Again, we talk about it all the time, right? I mean, I mean the 162-game the season with spring training and the playoffs is, 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 is a grind. It's the ultimate grind. And... Um, you got to be prepared and able to handle a lot of things, not only physically, but, you know, mentally, emotionally. You've got to be able to deal with failures and successes and weather the storm. And, um, you know, I, I feel like our group is in a really good place um, from a focus standpoint and playing with confidence and having a lot of trust in each other. And, and I think it's a group that really enjoys playing with one another. So whatever comes our way, you know, when when we were ready to – thought we were ready to go play a game the other night at 930, like the guys were ramping up and I got guys beating down my door as I'm doing these Zoom calls about the weather. You know, Judge, he's got his eye black on, like with his glove on, here we go. And then all of a sudden it's – it's like, all right, let's go win a game at 4, four o'clock tomorrow now, they just told us. So um, – 
you know they're they're uber focused on the task and um we know we got a big task here with with the astros and we're excited to take the challenge i'm meredith right here aaron ikf back in the lineup what went into that decision making process well giancarlo being in the outfield so carps the dh um and just felt like you know <clears throat> the more the righty lineup against verlander uh, is is kind of the way I wanted to go. Obviously, I mean he's probably going to win the Cy Young, and he's great against both hands, but especially tough against lefties. Um, so I like the righty lineup, and I feel like um, Isaiah, um, you know, when he's playing at his best, is a guy that's really tough with runners in scoring position down at the bottom of the lineup, uh, and when he's playing well defensively, is has a, has a real impact. So feel like for us to be at our best we need to get him rolling in this uh in this as well is that an everyday decision for you or is he your starting shortstop the rest of the series yeah it'll be an everyday decision you know we got Peraza on we got obviously Cabrera who can play short so it'll be just kind of match up and game to game but I feel like Izzy's going to play a big role for us more questions for Aaron on uh, the back we'll get you the microphone What was the reaction from Jameson when you told him you'd be, he'd be starting this game, and was it anything out of the ordinary, being that you know he's from here? No, um, you know when we got rained out, um, you know first thing I did was check with Nestor, uh, to feel make sure he was he was good to go, and then I grabbed Jamo and just said, Nestor's going to go tomorrow. You got game one. He's like, let's go. Second row on your left. Hi, Aaron. Uh, after near misses against Houston in 17 and 19, what makes you think this team can get over the hump this year? I felt like we were going to get over the hump in 19. I feel like we can do that now. Playoffs are hard. This is a great team we're up against. Um, I trust our group. I believe in our group. Um, but, you know. A lot of things happen over a seven-game series, so hopefully we go put our best foot forward and and are, and are able to move on to a World Series. But nothing more or less than any time you walk into a series. I've never walked into a playoff series that since I've been here that I didn't think we could win or should win, and nothing changes now. The row behind, Dave Lennon. Aaron, being able to stand in the outfield obviously helps you guys a lot. Line of flexibility. You have Carpenter at DH today. Was this you had kind of stayed away from that with his health issues. Was this the, the kind of spot you always, you know, not had penciled in, you know, if you were going to get here, but was this kind of the goal that maybe once you did get here, that was a time to, to give it a shot? Yeah, maybe, um, you know, it's something that I started really putting on, on G's board a few days ago. I actually considered it for game four in Cleveland. Talked to him a little about the night before after game three, um, and then ultimately decided, uh, kind of told him the morning of of, the, of game four, I just said, Let, let's do a game one in Houston. You know, that kind of makes the most sense, you know, ballpark wise and everything. So I started to get him mentally prepared for that the next few days. I checked with him after the game last night. He said, let's go. And then I followed up with him uh, late this morning just to make sure we're good to go. And he's eager to do it. So, um, but we also spoke about it. <clears throat> In the layoff between the regular season and the start of our division series, you know, he, he, he even came to me about it, like knowing that Carp was getting going, you know, understanding the situation that. So I think it's been hit definitely in his mind here over the last week or 10 days that, you know, hopefully this could be an option for us. A couple last ones. Greg on your left. Aaron, do you just see him as an option in left field here, or w would that be a potential? No, we'll see. Us? We'll see. I mean, here makes more sense, um, but I wouldn't rule it out when we get back home. But here, here more so. And Joel on your right. Aaron, a few days ago it seemed like Marinaccio was on target to be part of this. What happened with him? No, uh, nothing. Um, it was a very – one of the toughest decisions – um, that I had last night, that we had last night, you know, kind of debating it. <clears throat> I feel like he's not 100%. Um, he's, he's obviously had a great year and been a really important for us. Um, 
and I trust it. I really trust his makeup, and I know he wants to be out there and wants the ball, and I know he's cut out for this. But I do feel like he's less, just a little bit less than what he needs to be. That said, I could still see him making it on the next round. If something were to happen in this round, I, I would go to him. I feel good. I feel good enough about putting him out there and like um, that. It's not a reckless. I just feel like he's a little less than certainly a hundred percent. Anything else for Aaron? And we'll finish up with Gabe. Uh, hey, Aaron. Uh, Verlander's had such an influence on this series over the years. Uh, how important will it be for you guys to, to make him work tonight and eventually you know, get one off him at some point in this series? we got to get four. So <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we start with one tonight. Obviously, he's an all-time great pitcher, certainly one of the greats of this generation, and still great at, you know, this deep into his career, probably going to win the Cy Young Award this year. So he's always a challenge. Um, we got our work cut out for us. We'll, you know, have a have a game plan for him, and hopefully, we're able to get to him a little bit and grab one. But, you know, we got to get four against this team. So, you know, hopefully that starts tonight with with Justin. Aaron, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Aquí, en medio de la rivalidad Red Sox Yankees, tengo que mandar un saludo a todos los que ven la máquina deportiva. La máquina, la máquina son ustedes, que tienen los motores encendidos y siguiendo béisbol, deporte, todos los días del año. Así que un beso para ustedes, soy Carolina Guillén y un regalito para los fanáticos.